receive my greetings and welcome to the public sector governance policy and administration session today we begin on the next chapter which is uh, leadership integrity and national values in public service leadership integrity and national values in public service these are three areas leadership one one is leadership two that is leadership in public service integrity in public service and national values in public service we are going to uh, tackle each and every aspect of uh, the subtopic leadership integrity and national values let us begin with leadership in public service. Leadership in public service in Kenya. Now, leadership in the Kenyan public service has many aspects. It is a multifaceted issue that has evolved over time and it plays an important role in driving public sector reforms, ensuring efficient service delivery and upholding the principles of good governance. We will begin by identifying some of the aspects of leadership in Kenya public service. We will identify the key aspects. The first one being ethical leadership. Ethical leadership. Now, ethical conduct is a cornerstone of effective public service leadership. And leaders are expected to uphold high standards of integrity, transparency, and accountability in the decision making and actions. And here in Kenya, we have the Ethics and Anti Corruption Commission, which plays a crucial role in enforcing ethical standards and combating corruption in the public sector. So, the first aspect of leadership in public service in Kenya is ethical leadership. The second aspect is transformative leadership. Transformative leadership inspires and motivates teams to achieve a shared vision. Transformative leaders foster innovation creativity and continuous improvement in the public service. So the Kenyan government uh, has recognized the importance of transformative leadership and has implemented various programs to develop leadership capacity within the public service. Transformative leadership is one that inspires and motivates the public servants to achieve a shared vision. The third aspect of leadership in public service is citizen-centric leadership or citizen-centered, citizen-centric leadership, citizen-centric leadership. Now, public servants are ultimately accountable to the citizens they serve. So effective leaders prioritize the needs and interests of the citizens, ensuring that public services are accessible, affordable, and responsive to the diverse needs of the Kenyan population. And that involves active engagement with the communities and stakeholders to understand their concerns and their aspirations. Citizen-centered leadership is an aspect of leadership in public sector. The fourth aspect, performance management. 
performance management. Now, performance management systems are essential for holding public servants accountable for their performance. And effective leaders set clear performance expectations, provide regular feedback, and also reward high-performing individuals and teams. And that creates a culture of excellence and continuous improvement within the public service. Public performance management. Now, what are the challenges of public service leadership in Kenya? Challenges. What are some of the challenges to public service leadership in Kenya? Now, public service leadership in Kenya today faces a myriad of challenges that hinder its effectiveness and efficiency in delivering services to the citizens. And these challenges are many and interconnected, stemming from various factors, including one, political interference and patronage. Stemming from number one, political interference and patronage. Political interference is a persistent challenge in Kenya's public service leadership. And it often manifests as undue influence in appointments, promotions, and decision-making processes. Patronage, where leaders prioritize loyalty over competence, also undermines meritocracy. It undermines professionalism, all right? And that's why you may find that in Kenya, sometimes there is no meritocracy, there is no uh, professionalism because of patronage, which is a challenge in the public service. Patronage is where leaders prioritize loyalty over competence, and that undermines professionalism, and that is a challenge today. Two, corruption and mismanagement. Corruption and mismanagement are challenges in the public service. Corruption remains a significant problem in Kenya's public sector. It erodes public trust. It diverts resources from essential services and perpetuates inequality in the society. Mismanagement, often linked to corruption, leads to inefficient use of resources and it also leads to poor service delivery. Corruption and mismanagement. There is also the challenge of inadequate, inadequate capacity and skills. Inadequate capacity and skills. Many public service leaders lack the necessary skills and knowledge to effectively manage complex issues and delivery services in a rapidly changing environment. And that is a um, exacerbated by limited investment in training and development uh, uh, programs. So you have people working in the public service without skills, without the capacity, and this inadequacy is exacerbated by lack of training and lack of um, uh, uh, development programs in the public sector. So these are challenges inadequate capacity and skills. Number four, bureaucratic inertia and resistance to change. Bureaucratic inertia and resistance to change is another challenge in the public service leadership. Now, 
the Kenya public service is often characterized by bureaucratic inertia with resistance to change and innovation. And that hinders the implementation of reforms and the adoption of new technologies and practices that could improve service delivery. Bureaucratic inertia and resistance to change. Four, five, weak accountability and transparency. Weak accountability and weak transparency. Now, accountability mechanisms are often weak, making it difficult to hold public service leaders responsible for their actions. There is also lack of transparency in decision making and resource allocation, which further undermines public trust and confidence in the public service weak accountability and transparency. Six, inadequate resources and infrastructure. Inadequate resources and infrastructure are challenges in the public sector. Limited financial resources and inadequate infrastructure, particularly in rural areas, pose significant challenges to effective service delivery, and that can lead to understaffing, lack of essential equipment, and poor working conditions, which can uh, demotivate public servants and hinder their performance. There are also seven social cultural factors social cultural factors. These are deep-rooted uh, deep social cultural factors such as tribalism and nepotism, which can influence leadership choices and they can also influence decision-making processes. So these factors can... The factors can perpetuate inequality and hinder merit-based appointments. We are talking about social cultural factors which can hinder uh, merit-based appointments and promotions. So Kenya is deeply rooted into tribalism and nepotism, which influences choices, influences who works in the public sector, and that has hindered proper service delivery. So these are seven challenges in the public sector. Let's now discuss integrity. Integrity. We've done with leadership. Integrity in the public service in Kenya. Integrity. Now, integrity in public service is a critical pillar of good governance and sustainable development. It refers to the adherence of high moral and ethical principles. Um, it refers to uh, honesty, transparency, and accountability in the conduct of public affairs. And it is essential for building public trust it is essential for ensuring efficient and uh, effective service delivery and also promoting a just and equitable society. That is integrity. Key elements. What are the key elements of integrity in the public service? The first key element is honesty and truthfulness. Honesty and truthfulness is the first key element of um, integrity in the public service. Public servants are expected to be honest. They're expected to be truthful in their dealings 
with the public, with their colleagues, and their superiors. And that involves providing accurate information. That involves avoiding lies, avoiding deception, and disclosing conflicts of interest. That's the meaning of being honest and truthful. The second key element is impartiality and fairness. Impartiality and fairness, being impartial, being fair. Public servants must treat all individuals equally and fairly without discrimination, without favoritism, based on their face value. All right? They should not treat people based on uh, ethnicity, based on their gender or religion or other personal attributes. And decisions should be based on merit and in accordance with the law. So if you are a public servant, you are required to treat all members of the public with impartiality and fairly, without discrimination, without favoritism, regardless of personal attributes, regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of their religion, regardless of their gender, impartiality and fairness. The third key element of integrity, number three, is accountability and transparency. Accountability and transparency. Public servants are accountable for their actions and decisions and must be transparent in their dealings with the public. And that includes providing uh, clear information about their work, disclosing potential conflicts of interest, and being open to scrutiny. So if you are a public servant, you are required to ensure that you are open to scrutiny, that your actions can be queried, your decisions can be um, held to scrutiny by the uh, by different bodies of the government or by the public. So accountability and transparency is a key element of integrity. The fourth element is respect for rule of law. Respect for rule of law. Respect for rule of law. Public servants must uphold the rule of law and respect the legal framework within which they operate. And that includes complying with laws, complying with policies, and ensuring that their actions are consistent with the principles of good governance. That's the fourth element, respect for rule of law. Five, professionalism and competence. Professionalism and competence is a key element of integrity. Public servants should strive for excellence in their work and should also maintain high levels of professionalism. And that includes acquiring and maintaining the necessary skills and knowledge to perform their duties effectively and, and efficiently being competent. Make sure that if you are a public servant, you are well trained. And if you are not trained, make sure you upgrade your skills so that you are, you provide your services with the highest level of excellence. That is professionalism and competence. So these are five key elements of integrity in the public service. One, honesty and truthfulness. Two, impartiality and fairness. Three, Contrability and transparency. Four, respect for the rule of law. Five, professionalism in and competence. So let's now analyze the national values in public service. National values in the public service. Now, national values in the public service in Kenya are enshrined in the Constitution of Kenya 
and further elaborated in various laws and policies. These national values serve as guiding principles for the conduct and behavior of public servants, and they aim to foster a culture of integrity, professionalism, and service to the public. We'll analyze a few of these uh, national values. And the first one is patriotism. Patriotism is the first national value in the Kenyan constitution. That is Article 10. Article 10 of the Kenyan Constitution on National Values and Principles of Governance. It reads that the national values and principles of governance in this article bind all state organs, state officers, public officers, and all persons whenever any of them applies or interprets this constitution and next applies or interprets any law or makes or implements public policy decisions. The national Values and principles of governance include a patriotism. So patriotism is the first one. Patriotism. Patriotism. You understand? Patriotism is the first value. And public servants are expected to demonstrate loyalty and commitment to the nation. Loyalty and commitment to the nation is being patriotic. Do you understand? Patriotism, national unity, national unity, non-discrimination, patriotism, national unity, non-discrimination, and respect for diversity. These are national values. You understand? Public servants are required to demonstrate loyalty and commitment to the nation. They are required to promote national unity and also to respect diversity, non-discrimination and 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 respect for diversity of or respect for the diversity of the Kenyan society. And they should treat all citizens equally without any form of discrimination. That is a national value. The next one is human dignity. Human dignity. Human dignity. Together with equity, social justice, human dignity, social uh, justice, inclusiveness, equality, and so on. Public servants should prioritize the welfare of the public and uphold the dignity of all individuals. They should promote equality, they should promote equity, they should promote social justice, they are required to promote inclus inclusiveness in public service delivery and to ensure that all citizens have equal access to uh, public services and public opportunities. Three is integrity. Another national value is three, integrity, accountability, transparency. Integrity, accountability, transparency, and responsible use of resources. Integrity is a fundamental value in public service, 
and public servants should act with the honesty, integrity, and transparency in their dealings with the public and their colleagues. That should be, they should, they are required to be accountable for their actions and accountable for their decisions and the use of public resources responsibly and efficiently. The fourth national value, servant, servant leadership. Servant leadership. And this servant leadership is required from all public servants and the public servants are expected to demonstrate servant leadership, prioritizing the needs of the public and serving with humility and dedication. They should maintain high standards of professionalism, ethics and competence in their work, continuously seeking to improve their skills and knowledge. Servant leadership. Five, collective, collective responsibility, collective responsibility. Public servants should work collectively and collaboratively and share responsibility for achieving common goals. They should support each other and work together to provide efficient and effective services to the public. So, candidate, these are five national values. Uh, there is the last one here in the constitution is uh, sustainable development. Sustainable development is a national value. That is to say that uh, should ensure that uh, their decisions that they make are uh, not meant to meet only this, this, the, the short-term needs, but also the long-term needs, taking into consideration the needs of future generations. So public servants should shy away from what we call short-termism, short-termism. So sustain, sustainable development is a national value national value. We've discussed human dignity, patriotism, uh, good governance, integrity, transparency. So these are national values. And candidates, the, the national values are not merely aspirational. They are not merely aspirational, but are legally binding on all public servants. These are not things that the public servants should aspire to attain. No, these are values that are legally binding on all public servants. And the Public Service Commission is responsible for enforcing these values and promoting ethical conduct in the public service. So the PSC has developed a code of conduct and ethics for public officers that, that outlines the expected standards of behavior and the consequences of breaking these standards. So by upholding these national values, public servants can build trust, they can enhance service delivery and contribute to the development of a just and equitable society. So the values candidates provide a framework for ethical decision making and public and, and a guide. These values provide a guide um, to the public servants in their daily interactions with the public and in the daily interactions with their colleagues. So that is the end of the lesson on leadership, integrity and national values in public service in Kenya. We began by analyzing aspects of leadership in public service and we identified four aspects, ethical leadership, transformative leadership, citizen-centric leadership, and we have performance management.
we also identified seven challenges of eight seven challenges in public service one is political interference and patronage number two corruption and mismanagement number three inadequate capacity and skills in the public service bureaucratic inertia and resistance to change five weak accountability and transparency six inadequate resources and infrastructure and social cultural factors we went further to define integrity in the public uh, service and identified five key elements of integrity one honesty and truthfulness the second one is impartiality and fairness number three accountability and transparency number four respect for the rule of law and lastly professionalism and competence in closing we have discussed the national values in kenya one is patriotism national unity non-discrimination and respect for diversity number two is human dignity which can be uh, actualized through equality social justice inclusiveness and equi equality equity and equality number three is integrity accountability and transparency servant leadership collective responsibility and sustainable development here is your today's assignment on leadership integrity and national values in public service one how does political interference undermine effective leadership and integrity in the public service and what strategies can be implemented to mitigate this challenge two in what ways can public sector leaders effectively model and promote national values such as patriotism integrity and social justice within the organizations three how does the lack of ethical leadership contribute to the erosion of integrity and national values in the public service and what measures can be taken to foster ethical leadership four what role does citizen participation play in promoting leadership integrity and national values in the public sector and how can this participation be encouraged and strengthened in our next lesson we will study and discuss principles of corporate governance bye